Hello everybody, so good to see all of you again. Uh, welcome to our Sunday service of the Central Christian Church. I want to continue on the topic of reset. Reset our hearts is very important. I talked about it uh, last week and uh, if, you want, if you have not heard the sermon, please go back uh, you know, and listen to the lesson on, online. Why is reset so important? It's because we have to keep re-examining our hearts and making sure that we are always walking in the correct path with God. The year is coming to an end. And uh, it's very important for us to really check our heart and to re-examine so that we can set new directions and new goals and uh, to be able to move forward with our lives with God, especially with the, uh, you know, the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, moving into a new transitional phase of the endemic and our lives is opening up. So we need to not just go and, and rush and, and do all kind of thing without thinking our own walk with God. So let me read to you the theme passage of our lesson. Let's turn to the book of Mark, chapter 12. Here Jesus says in verse 29, the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. Jesus teaches us. This is the most important commandment. You know, the teacher of law came and asked Jesus, what is the most important commandment? What is the thing that I need to set my heart on? And Jesus told him, the most important, the thing that you need to set your heart on is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Not just love God and love God half-heartedly, but with everything, all in. So for today, I want to focus on the first aspect. Loving God with all our hearts. You know, when we think about the heart, loving God with our heart, I think about the concept of having a very deep emotional connection with God. The heart is always about feelings, emotions, the passion in our life. You know, so today I hope to be able to help us to learn this aspect of our life where we learn to connect with God, our God in heaven, in a deep emotional way. Sometimes it's not easy to connect with God in that deep emotional way because we do not see God. He's not physically present with us. It is easy for us to connect with another person because we see them, we can feel them. But yet you find that Jesus teaches that we need to connect with him in this way. To love him with all our heart and to connect with him in a deep emotional connection. To have that sense of closeness, that sense of intimacy, the sense of desire and passion. To be with him do you have that sense do you when you see god when you read the bible when you pray do you feel emotionally connected with the father in heaven and it's a very important quality because if we do not have that important quality you'll find that the joy the joy of your walk with god will not be there and when there's no joy, you find that your walk with God will become dry 
And sometimes you will think like following God is just a matter of obedience, do, do, and do. Let me share with you a, a, a thought. As you know, recently I went to America to attend my daughter's wedding. Other than my daughter's wedding, do you know what was the thing that I really love the most? As all of you know that I love photography. Some of you might think that, wow, Tech Ming, going to America, you have such a great time taking photographs, videos of the sites, of the natural parks. And maybe you might be enjoying the cool weather, air conditioning weather the whole time. Or maybe Tech, you might really like the shopping, buying things that you might not find it available here in Malaysia or Singapore. You know what is the most exciting thing for me? The most important, my most favorite part of the entire trip. Let me show you some picture here. So here's uh, some pictures of my wife and my two girls. You know, more than all the sites, natural parks, shopping, and everything. Those are great by itself. But the most, most favorite part of my journey, my stay in America, is to spend time with my two girls and also to have a great time with my wife in America. To be emotionally connected or reconnected with my two girls since we've been separated uh, you know, for, for a while. That is my most favorite part. I really enjoy going to the parks, taking walks, having meals with them. And you know what? With Patrice and I, we definitely took that chance to grow even closer to one another. Every morning, we'll go out on our morning walks to the parks and we really enjoy each other company. You know, I would say right after this trip, my relationship with my wife is so much more closer, emotionally connected, because we took time, we took that time to spend time together. That is my most favorite part. You know, in, in the same way with our Father in Heaven, Christianity, with God, is not just do, 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 or just obey, obey, obey. It is about that closeness, that intimacy, that passion with the Father. And that is what God wants from us. Let me show you some scriptures about how God feels about us to show you how excited and how much He loves us. Let us turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. And the very beginning, when God created our lives. Let us read verse 26. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over the livestock and over all the wild animals, over all the creatures that moved along the ground. And then let us jump to verse 31. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And that was evening. That was morning, the sixth day. This is about the creation of our world. And every day when God created the world, he said it was good. God really loved creating our world. But you know, right at the very end, on the sixth day, when he created man, when he created you, mankind, when we were born into this world, the Bible says he was so excited and he says, it is very good. God was thrilled when we were born. And you say, why? Because God loves us very, very much. When you love someone, just like when your baby comes out, 
you will be so excited to see your newborn child. Let's read another verse. In John chapter 11, verse 33. Here is where Lazarus has just passed away. And Jesus came to town and he met up with Mary and Martha. And in verse 33, it says here, When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. Wow. In verse 35, is the shortest verse in the Bible. It simply says, Jesus wept. When he saw the pain in Mary, Martha, and the rest of the people, he couldn't help but to feel the pain himself. And he wept. He cried. He was so sorrowful because he saw the pain of his very good friends. That is how God is like to us. He loves us so much. And when he sees your pain, he feels it. When he sees you being hurt, God feels hurt too. God feels our sorrow. Why? Because he loves us very, very much. When you love someone, you feel their pain as well. Let me read to you one more verse to demonstrate to you how much God loves us. Let's go to the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Most of us, when we read this book, we get confused and puzzled. But don't, don't, don't worry about all the apocalypse language. Just, let's just focus on how much God loves us. In verse 1 of chapter 21, it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea, and I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things have passed away. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. At the very end, after all the mess, the end of the world, Judgment Day, after all the mess that mankind has created, God still wants to make things new with us. Just like a couple who had a lot of problems in life, God had a lot of problems with us. God wants to renew this relationship with us. As I said, just like a couple who had a lot of problems, who decide to restart again. Don't we love that when we see a couple who had a lot of problems coming back together? It's, it's like the example that I shared in the previous sermon, the first one about resetting the heart, about Edward and Lillian. Their marriage was in a strain, problematic. But yet, when they became disciples, they decided to reset their marriage and did their second wedding, a revow, to start all things anew. And that is how God feels about us. No matter how messy our life, God wants to renew things with us. And why? Because 
He loves us. And He loves us so very, very much. You know what's the challenge? The challenge is to learn how to love God with this deep emotional connection. Now, so some of us, it's, it comes easily. For some, it's rather difficult. Why? Maybe because of your upbringing and your growing up years. Certain things have happened to you. And you're bringing those pain and scars of your life into your walk with God. Maybe you're brought up emotionally inhibited, where you find it hard to, to feel and to share your feelings. Nobody at home talks about feelings. And so you do not know how to feel and be emotionally connected with God. Or maybe you went through some past hurts and traumas in relationships. And traumas really haunt us throughout our lives. And we want to run away from relationship because we see pain. And we want to be emotionally detached. And so because of these bad memories, we look at God. We are afraid. We are afraid to be attached to God. So we do not want to make ourselves available to the Father in heaven. We emotionally detach from the Father in heaven and we just do, 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 do in our walk with God. Or maybe some of us, we take relationships for granted. We are very shallow in our relationship. So we are shallow with God. Or for some of us, we are too crowded. We have too many things. Like in the parable of the sower, the, the third soil, too crowded for our hearts to feel God's love. No matter what it is, God loves you. And we have to be aware of what is the thing that might be hindering us from really loving God deeply, sincerely, and emotionally with all our hearts. If you find yourself having difficulty, make a decision today to reset your heart. To reset your heart with God emotionally, with all your heart. So how do we do that? I'm going to give you some practicals. These are practicals from relationship experts. Six strategies that will help us to build great relationships. And so we're going to apply that in our own relationship with God. The first one, develop trust. Trust is the foundation of our relationship. Without trust, there cannot be a relationship. And we know that in a relationship with the people around us, with you know, your husband, your wife, your partners, your friends, we have to trust each other. And of course, it takes time to develop that secure feeling with the other person. But once you have that trust, it is beautiful. So in the same way, with your walk with God, you need to develop that trust in God. In the Bible, the word trust is faith. We need to walk in faith. We need to trust our Father. You know, with, with people, they will betray us and they will hurt us. But the good news is, with God, your Father in heaven, He will not. He will always be there for you. Do you trust your Father in heaven? Do you put all your faith in Him? And we need to. Of course, it takes time to develop that trust. It takes time to know Him better. But we need to develop that full trust in Him. Study out the Bible. Know Him better so that you can step out in faith and experience God's faithfulness to you. First step, develop trust. Second step, the relationship expert says, really know your partner. You know, you cannot enter into a relationship without knowing your partner. And that's why when we counsel people in our church, we always tell them, Make sure you date for a longer time. Don't just look at a guy or a girl and fall in love and 
within three months, let's get married. No, let's, let's have a good time of dating. Let's really get to know each other as friends. And in the same way, in your walk with God, do you really know God? Do you really know the Father in heaven? You have to really know Him inside and out. That is why God gave us His Word. This is the autobiography of your father in heaven. His life is displayed all over here to show you how he's like. What does he love and what does he hate? His character. We need to be diligent to study out the Bible so that you can know him through and through. And when you know your father in heaven, then you'll feel that emotional closeness with him. You'll be able to learn how to love him with all your heart. Here's the other advice. Be available emotionally. As I mentioned before, some of us, we hold back our feelings. We, we dare not feel because it's painful. We went through some things in our life. See, if you hold back in any way, you are not opening up yourself to the possibility of a strong connection. Yes, maybe certain relationships have hurt you. Let them go. But with God, take the chance. Be vulnerable. You know God will not betray you. Let yourself open up. Open up your heart wide. Be vulnerable. Decide to really let God know you. And when you pray, let God know your feelings, your sadness, your joy, your anger, your peace. Let God know you true and true. Be emotionally available to God. And the beautiful thing is, God doesn't mind your complaints. He really doesn't mind. You look at the book of Psalms, read it. David went through a lot of problems, and when he penned up the book of Psalms, you'll find David complained to God a lot, and he would say, I'm so sad. I'm so angry. God, and he even says sometimes to God, God, I'm so disappointed with you. But you know what? David, after opening up wide his heart, always come back to God in the right way. Because when you are available to God, God will help your heart to be healed. So let's be available emotionally to God. Decide to be vulnerable with God in your prayers. And the next one, express. Express your affection freely. Ah, it's not good enough just to be available emotionally. But we need to speak. We need to say it out. We need to write. We need to express our feelings. You know, you find that a couple in a budding relationship, dating, they have very little problem telling each other, I love you. You know, I, I, I remember those times when I was dating Patrice, when I wrote letters to her, you know, email, uh, no emails, just letters. Wow. If you read those letters, you, you know that I'm lovesick. Almost every paragraph, oh, I love you, I've been thinking about you, I missed you, you're the sun, you're my moon, you're my stars, oh, love, right? But you find many couples, after they get married, they kind of stop doing that. A side challenge to the married couples. Please make sure you express your affection to each other. Continue. You know, in, a, in the same way, do you... Talk freely with God and express your love, your gratitude to Him? Do you share with Him your joy? And do you tell Him, God, I, I really love you so much? I know, I've been doing journaling, like what I've been uh, you know, encouraging all of you. And one of the part of the journaling is where we write now things that we, we are grateful for. It's amazing when I start to do that. Every day, I write down things I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for the time I could spend with her. 
I'm grateful I could take a walk. I'm grateful that I was a I'm able to stay in this beautiful place. I'm grateful for the food that I have. And it's amazing when I express and when I write down those gratefulness, my heart is lifted up. Those are the things that God has given me. You know, do you express your gratefulness to God? And when you do, you find that your heart will grow even closer to your Father in heaven. And not only gratefulness, I added uh, something new, looking forward. What do I look forward today? What am I expecting to see that God is going to, to help me in my journey today? These are the things I look forward to, the adventures that God is going to set forth for me in my day. Wow, those things really helped me so much in my own walk with God. So brothers and sisters, in your walk with God, express, express your affection freely. Don't hold back. The next one, partner with him. Partnering with your spouse is very important. When two people are united together, they are no longer two, but they are one. That's what the Bible teach. And we need to learn to partner with our spouse. And when you do that, you find that the, the unity, the relationship with your spouse become closer. Now, in the same way, the same advice, we need to partner with God. Catch His vision. God has great vision for our lives and for the world. Catch His love for the people. God has great compassion and care for the people. Catch His forgiveness. God is willing to forgive the people around them though they messed up. Brothers and sisters, do you catch God's vision? Are you partnering with Him? You know, you need to look at God. Jesus says, go make disciples of all nations. Spread the good news. I want all people to be safe. Let's catch that vision with the Father. I know there's nothing else more exciting in my Christian walk with God. Well, there are many things that are exciting, but this is one of the most exciting things that I, I have in my own walk with God. It's the ability to share my faith, the joy of my Christian walk with the people around me. Partnering with God, working together with Him to impact another person. So brothers and sisters, I want you to partner with him, work together with him to spread the good news and to also strengthen the brothers and sisters around you. Finally, very important because this stumbles a lot of relationship, obstacles, troubles, trials in a relationship. So we have to learn how to overcome obstacles, troubles and trials together in our relationship so that what? Our relationship can be better. Don't give up when you have difficult trials. Fight through it. Talk through it. Deal with the conflict. In the same way, there are many challenges in our life. As you walk in your life, there, there will be troubles and difficulties that you will face. This is part and parcel of life. Sin has come into the world and has created troubles. But do you face it together with God? Are you and God in the trenches together fighting this battle and war together? And, and overcoming together? Praying to your Father in heaven who has all the strength and might to help you to overcome. And when you do that, you find that, wow, your relationship with your Father in heaven in that trench. Get closer. He's your partner, partner in the gospel. And you walk together. You never have to walk alone because God is with you. And not only that, God has given you the church, the brothers, the sisters, to help you to overcome together. Let us overcome obstacles together with the Father in heaven. When you do all those things, those six practical things, it will really help you to draw closer to God with all your heart, 
to develop that deep emotional connection with God. I want to close by reading this verse in 1 John. Chapter 4, verse 10. This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And let's jump down to verse 19. We love because He first loved us. Beautiful passage. You know, the Bible says what? We learn love. This is love. Not because we love God so much, but because He loves us with all His heart. He demonstrated first. He created the world with us, for us. He gave us everything on this planet. He let us enjoy our life. And most importantly, He let His own Son, Jesus Christ, sacrifice Himself on the cross so that our sins may be forgiven. And even at the very end, God wants to make things new with us on Judgment Day. You know, brothers and sisters, in the next few months, before the year end, I want us to reset our hearts, re-examine where we're at, our strengths, our weaknesses, our closeness with the Father. I want to go through this whole series, reset, all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. Ask yourself, which area are you doing well? Which area are you weak in? Let's talk to your group together so that you can reset your walk with God by learning to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Where God is first in everything, in your time, in your finances, in your energy, God is always going to be first. Thank you, brothers, sisters. I'll see you again. Let's reset our heart with God and give God our very, very best. Love you all. Bye.